<laughs> well, welcome to Speechless. We're glad to have you here. And uh, I hope you get some hot chocolate, some cookies, if you're watching live. If you're not watching live, it's still probably cold outside. Uh, but it is uh, quite a blizzard going on. So uh, be safe if you're out on the street, but if you're out on driving around, of course, you're not watching the show. Uh, I don't think they've figured that one out yet, but I think that's a good thing. So, hey, tonight's show, uh, again, your family liberties, your rights are at stake. We're going to be talking a lot about Minnesota Common Core, uh, core Curriculum. And is it really Minnesota Common Core? That's a good question. Uh, I don't think it is. And we're going to talk about the distinction uh, between Common Core and various other education programs. And the whole purpose of this Common Core is to nationalize education. Um, my guest, Linda Bell, uh, will be calling in. She was going to be here live, but, you know, we made a good judgment call and said, uh, stay home. <laughs> no need to come out. And I came out here uh, before it started snowing, and hopefully I can get home. <laughs> We'll see how good my producer's driving is. <laughs> anyway, we're going to talk about this Common Core, what you need to know, specifically what's happening in White Bear Lake uh, with the International Baccalaureate, what does that mean, biometrics uh, is going to be implemented in the White Bear Area School District. Uh, this is serious stuff, and uh, parents, you need to pay attention to this. So call your friends. Um, so we can get an, so they can get an idea of what's going to be happening in your school. Uh, I have an announcement to make, and let's bring up graphic 36. And this is a rally for religious freedom that's going to be Monday, February 24th, down at the state capitol. Your religious liberties are at stake. I'm one that knows that personally. You get these rogue judges who could care less about the Constitution, have their own agendas, uh, and um, they attack people one by one. They pick them off one by one. But at times, in picking off people one by one, you really set the precedent for doing it to a mass amount of people. So Monday, February 24th, down at the State Capitol Rotunda, from 2 to 3, there's going to be a rally for religious liberty. Uh, so it's indoors, so you don't have to dress warm. Uh, but there will be a number of speakers there from all faiths talking about the importance of your religious liberty and what's going on in the legislature to take away your religious liberty. And one of the big areas is the bullying bill. Uh, another area is uh, the family law. Another area is taking away your right to vote. That's, that's uh, going to have a big test on the legislature this year, whether you get to vote anymore uh, for the election of judges. And people, don't ever give up your right to vote. Uh, don't do it. This is a form of checks and balances. So I'm sure there's a lot of issues that they will talk about down at the rally, but I want you to know about it so that you can go down there if you've never been down there, uh, why not? You know, go down there, say you don't even want to go to the rally, but just see the Capitol, see what's going on. Uh, it's a good time to be down there with other people and uh, see what's taking place. Um, and before we get into today's show, I just have a personal announcement to make. And, you know, when the nice thing about local cable TV is anybody can come on and do a show and talk about what they want to take the classes 10 bucks um, and you get a show and the Comcast subscribers pay for it thank you but uh, one of the nice things you can do some personal stuff and tell your stories and I have a particular one uh, to tell uh, today and that is uh, Last Wednesday morning uh, at 1230, my dad uh, went to uh, see his 
heart's delight, uh, his treasure, and that was Jesus. Hmm. And he was a marvelous, marvelous father, a great man, and had a lot of fun together, and he just had a super, super personality, and uh, even in his uh, dying moments, uh, he was uh, joking around, but always with the right perspective. And I'm just going to show you a, a little clip here. You know, he was in a bad health um, with myasthenia gravis, and so that was helping to deteriorate things and being on steroids and blood thinners and all kinds of stuff. Um, you, you see, you saw his health deteriorating. So I, you know, went went home to Spokane and uh, interviewed him for, you know, at least two and a half hours and also mom and uh, just got some of the stories. But one of the uh, his grandchildren asked him, what advice do you have for your children and uh, your grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and uh, this is what he had to say. Should I give some advice to my grandchildren and great-grandchildren? Well, probably wouldn't hurt. <laughs> uh, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And uh, the main thing is knowing Jesus. And always keep in contact with him. Keep short accounts. And uh, when you're going to date, date a, a Christian a person. And of course, same with marrying. Uh, the, the word is really clear on whether a person is equally yoked. And equally yoked means of the same accord. And if you're not a Christian, I, equally yoked, I guess, would be uh, not marrying a, a Christian. But if you're a Christian, you better be marrying a Christian and going around with those crowds. It doesn't work to try to minister to people or change them after you're yoked with them. It's, you know, God can do that. But that's not a kind of a losing proposition. Stay out of debt as much as you can. Don't use a lot of credit. Buy used. Put together your money before you buy things. Now some of these things I didn't do. <laughs> but uh, don't do as I did. Do as I say. <laughs> Love one another. It's another blessing of the family. Uh, our really immediate family has been really pretty solid and not having to go through a lot of pain of getting mad of each, with each other and things like that. And occasionally something will flare up, but pray about it and let's get on with it. So I'm sure there's way more advice, but if you work on those couple things, that'd be good. And when it's time to go meet the Lord, I'm ready, Kay's ready, so it's all right to shed a tear or two, but don't do a lot of wailing and things like, like that, because we've lived a good life, and uh, praise be to God. Well, that was December 2012. That's Ronald Howard Kinley. And uh, one month before his 80th birthday, he went on uh, again to see his heart's desire, his treasure, Jesus Christ. And of course, uh, in the last day, he uh, didn't wake up uh, Monday morning. 
uh, when he was at a assisted living facility, and he went uh, to the ER, and they eventually he woke up, but they were doing life support stuff with him, and uh, you know, uh, and he couldn't communicate uh, because of that, and then a kidney failure, liver failure, and we the uh, family agreed to take him off life support, and. Uh, when the tubes came out, he goes, man, it's about time you took those out, <laughs> you know, but he did it very slowly and each word was a breath and, and uh, which allowed him to uh, be able to talk uh, that day to um, uh, just a ton of people came by to see him that day. And so for about uh, eight hours, you know, people were called and say, hey, time to come in and I talked to him twice on the phone, and uh, he was able to communicate back and understand. And uh, as you saw him in that video, that was his attitude. He was apologizing for not going faster, uh, and he was uh, <laughs> complaining to the doctors in his joking way, what, what's uh, taking so long here? <laughs> you know, can't you speed this up? He wasn't talking about, uh, you know, he was just... He wasn't talking about having them end it. It was just, just the idea of, I'm ready to go, you know. And he knew. He knew this was it and went very peacefully. Um, and it was just a, a fantastic occasion. Uh, and actually, you know, my family likes to sing. So we were singing songs of praise. And uh, uh, one of uh, my... Uh, family members said, hey, Dad, uh, do you want us to sing some more? And he goes, if it makes you feel better. <laughs> That's just the way it was. <laughs> oh, funny. Uh, all right, good man. And uh, we'll see you soon. All right, time isn't an issue with, uh, with God. Okay, uh, I'm going to have the control room. Uh, you should call our guest and uh, get her on the phone. Uh, what, we're going to have Linda Bell on, and she's with Minnesota's, uh, Minnesotans Against Common Core. And she's going to explain that to us. Uh, I guess I should have had her on the phone uh, waiting a little bit earlier. Um, but this is a serious, serious uh, phenomenon that is taking place across the United States. And Minnesota is one of the key states that got funded uh, for, uh, for Common Core. And with this Common Core coming into Minnesota, you need to know what it's about, who's behind it, uh, who's pushing it, and why, and what their ultimate objective is. And it doesn't, it doesn't just cover... Um, uh, you know, it's not just about education, but it's about data collecting for the rest of your life. And we've had Twyla Braze on the show, Citizens, uh, Citizens Council on Health Freedom. And what she has done is uh, expose the data collection on your babies through DNA that they, ha they have your baby DNA, unless you told them don't take it. And they wanted to do research on that and they wanted to keep that DNA forever. And then they'd sell it. And they make uh, a lot of money for selling that DNA to research firms. Uh, so what do we got going on? Uh, okay, why don't you type it up and <laughs> tell me what's, what's happening. Uh, we not <laughs> there may be a, a tough situation here. So uh, she's not answering. Oh, okay. You know what? Use my phone uh, to call it. That may be why. No, use mine because she'll recognize the phone number. Uh, yeah, I didn't set that up very well. So with the collection of baby DNA uh, going on, this is tying in with the Common Core curriculum and the biometrics that's taking place where they really they want to identify your child and they're going to have multiple ways of identifying your child not for the protection of your child but for 
um, their data collection and uh, doing whatever they want to do with that information and monitoring your life for the rest of uh, your, your life, cradle to grave type uh, philosophy. Well, we have Linda Bell on the phone right now. Uh, Linda, can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me, Tim? I can hear you very well. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Sure. <laughs> I, uh, I told everybody already that uh, you were wise and didn't drive to the studio. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you do something right, for sure. Uh, but what? Uh, tell us a little bit about Minnesota's Against Common Core and just what is uh, this Common Core curriculum all about? Sure. Well... Minnesotans Against Common Core is a nonpartisan grassroots organization, and uh, we, excuse me, <laughs> I'm coming from my home. Oh, yes, um, I, I don't think I can continue with the interview. Oh, okay. All right. We'll, um, we'll, we'll catch I'm you later or sorry. call back if you got some time there, okay? Yep, thank you. All right. So, yeah, uh, we're, we tried all different ways. Well, I'm going to go on with some of the graphics that we prepared here. And so let's uh, go to graphic uh, number nine. And basically, these are, this is the common core, what states that are being targeted for common core. Uh, what does it say? Not yet uh, repealed, the common core. Uh, I can't read that down there. Let's go to graphic 10. Uh, but there's a big emphasis in Minnesota uh, about these state standards. And he here's the big thing here, and this is what you have to understand without a doubt about Common Core, is that it is a set of nationwide standards, assessment, curriculum, teacher principal evaluations. And it's with a national database tracking system. So this isn't your state, this is the federal government tracking your child on every aspect of their education, their curriculum, even the teachers and the principals evaluation. A national standard. Remember, we're a republic. That's an important thing. We're a republic. We're not a national government. Um, we're a federal government. It's a big distinction. And so the people pushing this common core want a national standard. A national standard is like Russia, a Soviet system, where the state controls every aspect of your life. That's what this is promoting and pushing towards, and that's why we want um, this common core should not be, be being dealt with. And if you look at St. Paul Public Schools, where they have the slogan, Strong School, Strong Community, which uh, I made up the acronym Soviet-style uh, Soviet Systemic Control. Um, that's, it's the whole goal so that when a child leaves one classroom and moves and goes to another part of the city, they walk into their next classroom and the, they're ready for the next day's curriculum. It's the same curriculum all throughout the whole school system on the same day with the same words. People, this is dumbing people down. This is not letting kids achieve and maximize their potential and growth. It is a bad teaching style. It doesn't work, and that's why uh, the education system is going downhill in Minnesota, in my opinion. Um, so we don't want a national system because with a national system, you're going to get a, um, a dumbed-down approach to education. So if you leave Minnesota and move to uh, California and you, and you got a third grader, that third grader won't miss a beat as far as the education goes. It's a pretty, uh, pretty bad deal. So um, that's, that's the key thing you need to know about Common Core. Uh, and I shouldn't, I shouldn't say it's the key thing, but to me, it is one of the most uh, troubling parts of Common Core is this national approach. And it's not totally being pushed by the government. Uh, it's being uh, 
pushed by other um, other edu uh, by corporations and especially Bill Gates. But we'll see that. Well, we got a call coming in here. Uh, caller, do you have a comment or question? Uh, I do, Tim. Uh, this is Diana Longer. Hey, Diana. I have worked with teachers uh, who have struggled against this type of philosophy that's uh, permeating the school districts. And what I can tell you from a bird's eye view is that, one, parents want a more individualized approach to teaching in the classroom for the students because there is not one size fits all when it comes to students and coming to education and teaching our children. That's right. Two, this type of approach actually is demoralizing to our teachers because it takes away their discretionary uh, ability in teaching in the classroom to change what they're doing from moment to moment, day to day, in order to do their job, to do the best job for our children to make sure that they get the tools they need so they can be productive individuals. Sure, right. And I think that this idea that we need to have all one system, one standardized method of teaching, it, in, in maybe in theory in somebody's book somewhere, it works, but it is not practical because human beings are not uh, all the same, and that a teacher, actually here in Minnesota, uh, the state law says that a teacher has discretion uh, yes. in their ability to perform their duties, that they are a professional, and that they actually are called out as somebody who does have discretion in the execution of their duties. And what this new philosophy does, it actually tries to trump our state law. And it seems like many of the high-powered union, teacher union people, that they just stand by while they let this philosophy trump the state law, which yes. says that teachers have discretion in executing their day-to-day -day duties yes. as a teacher to do their job. Well, it's just not right. Exactly, and actually, uh, bring up graphic 35. This was going to be one of my final points here, but you brought it up. So here's the statute, Minnesota Statute 120B.021, Subdivision 2, and uh, Minnesota Statute 120B.021. 021 subdivision 1A and I don't have them written out there but that is the statute that says each school district ha has the responsibility or essentially they get to do and decide what's best for their students and so this common core is against our state statutes you can't you well, can't and it, yes and another thing that it does is that it takes responsibility away from our school board members yes. to make the decisions, the policy, the public policy decisions that are expected of them to make as the elected officials for their school district. Right. And that's why they're elected. It's because they stood for something. Right. They were going to do something. They were going to represent some ideas, some philosophy, some value. Right. And what this does is it basically puts them in the back seat and says, you know what, you just get to rubber stamp what the theory is because this is supreme. It, it, you're, you're right on with that. And it, it's, a, it's a huge, I mean, wh why have a school board anymore? And actually, that is what's going on in White Bear Lake. And what we're going to find out is that uh, uh, the school districts are removing the school board members' names so that you don't know who they are and you can't contact them. And 
in the real and then they'll just go well why do you need them anyway we're telling you what to do here's what you need to do on this national scale here's all the words you get to say so do it you know you don't right. need a school board you know oh so we can save a lot of money now i i understand the current philosophy of no administrator left behind and what they get paid and stuff <laughs> but you know we you still need a school board yeah <laughs> you know you just still need right. to have them why do we need elected officials when we have so many uh, professionals that are running everything and know our best interests? Right. Now, of course, I am being tongue-in-cheek because I think that elected officials play a very important role, and that is fundamental in preserving our republic, our democracy that we have. And when the elected officials say... You know, I think it's okay to abdicate my rights and to abdicate them to the professionals because they know best Then those elected officials are not doing right by the people who elected them. They are shirking their duty. Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, they are. Um, and let's go to graphic uh, 35 here because the Minnesota Constitution, uh, 33, I'm sorry, Minnesota Constitution, which lays out the need for public schools, says the stability of a Republican form of government, depending mainly upon the intelligence of the people, it shall be the only duty of the legislature to establish a general and uniform system of public schools. The legislature shall make such provisions by taxation or otherwise as will secure a thorough and efficient system of public schools throughout the state. So the key thing is there about an intelligent people being able to preserve a Republican form of government. But when you put in a nationalist system, that's not a Republican form of government. And it's not a Republican form of government for our schools or state mm -hmm. schools uh so i you know th those are just great points there uh that you're making so again on two levels not only do i see it as unconstitutional in the minnesota constitution i also see it as uh against the statutes uh as as you were saying there mm -hmm. so well, thank you very much for bringing this issue forward because i think a lot of people don't realize this type of New fad philosophy is going on uh, in, in permeating our school districts. It's not just in St. Paul school district. I think it's no. permeating a lot of school districts. Right. And I only know about it because I've had to represent a teacher that basically the union just said, well, we're not going to get involved here because, you know what, we don't want to make any waves. I mean, that's mm. the way I took it. And she literally had to get permission to go outside of uh, union representation, to get representation, to, to fight for the principles of being able to use her discretion that the state law gives her. Mm -hmm. And in the end, the arbitrator said, oh, no, no, we can't do that. Wow. And, and then we even, you know, district court, and in the end, the... You know, it's very tough to uh, uh, go to court uh, when you got a ruling of an arbitrator against you. But we tried yeah. anyway. We yeah. tried. Yeah, and, right. And, and that's what said, you have well, to do. Well, you know, I can't really see that the arbitrator was totally, you know, un, uh, you know, un, uh, you know, uh, arbitrary. wasn't totally arbitrary and capricious. So <laughs> you know, <laughs> it well, stands as it does. But in the in the same end, it's 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 needs to be end up being the judge's decision eventually uh it's got to get there at some point in time and then eventually up to the court supreme court that's that's what it's going to take to stop it but it makes it a very 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 difficult road uh and i think uh these administrators and, and see, know and that most teachers who find themselves in this predicament, in this challenge, mm -hmm. where they're being told you must teach the prescriptive mandated teaching style uh -huh. or, you know, go take a hike. Right. If you don't follow the, the uh, you know, this is what you do, 
you know, 10 minutes in their class. This is what you must do it 20 minutes into the class and, and not have wow. any deviation. It, most of them, because they're concerned about finding a job after yes. that job, uh, yes. and they want to retain their license, and there's a lot of other challenges to them, they basically bow out, and they don't go and challenge it because there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of downside to right. challenging the system. There's a lot of downside, Huge. Um, and you know it just it it just takes continued public information like what what you've got here to get the public aware of the challenges uh, that are going on in our school district that actually are not positive for our children and for their education and for them to become productive individuals in the future. Yes. Well, thank you, Carl. I appreciate uh, your time and your insight there and uh, helping to defend teachers uh, on, this, <laughs> on these very issues and statutes. Uh, so keep it up. You know, I, know, I know you will. Uh, Thanks. All right. Well, you know, I... One thing the caller mentioned there is that um, it's this is new, but it's really new with a just a different name with different degrees. And what happens is a system gets designed or a, a, a philosophy is established that people believe how things should be. And if you're a nationalist or a uh, believe in uh, big government, uh, you, you have that philosophy, so you're going to push national type issues, a national education. There shouldn't be any. We're a republic. Federal government's not in our constitution. They should have nothing to do with education at all. It's the state's issue uh, alone. Uh, but these things had uh, different names. So let's go to graphic 11 here and see the progression of Common Core, where it came from, and all along it's been uh, tweaked. So some of the names are progressive ed, uh, mastery learning, outcome-based education, quality ed, national standards, national goals, America 2000, goals 2000, global ed, world core, world-class ed, cradle to grave, school to work, cradle to career, no child left behind, race to the top, College and Career Readiness, and Common Core. <clears throat> Have you heard these names before? <coughs> uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure you have. Well, they're, they're all basically the same thing with a tweak. They're all looking at the national education, but each time, all these other ones have been stopped. Then they've been stopped for a number of reasons, and many politicians out there, uh, Michelle Bachman, you know, uh, fought against race to the top and no child left behind. And, and that's what got her career going, if I remember correctly. And so uh, instead of, you know, having this national education, she was looking for the local education where parents had more say, teachers had say, teachers had freedom, and education at the close level is the most important education. And cradle to grave, man, that, that's just the hallmark of a socialist theory and a socialist society. And, boy, uh, I just brought something else into my mind that I'll have to say at the end <laughs> uh, about Obamacare uh, in my dad's situation. Uh, unbelievable uh, what took place. Uh, yeah, it's not unbelievable. I, but anyway, so old reforms under a new name. Um, with twists here. You see, the same thing happened in, within the abortion industry. You had Planned Parenthood, uh, which started out as the American Nazi mu movement uh, with Margaret Sanger being involved in that and then went to eugenics. And, you know, it's the killing of inferiors, whether they're disabled or of an inferior race, black or Jewish. Um, but they kept changing the name, uh, euthanasia, forced sterilization, birth control, Planned Parenthood. And so now, but it's the same package. And the American Nazis didn't, uh, they didn't fight a battle. 
Nobody shot any guns at them, yet they had positions of power uh, in, in the United States. Uh, uh, Senator Byrd, you know, head of the Ku Klux Klan, you know, right there, one of the top persons in the United States. Um, and I guess another inferiority would be uh, political, political undesirables. You know, uh, for whatever reason, people didn't want around. Now, now with the anti-bullying bill, you know, could it come to the point where you get rid of people because you don't agree with their religious beliefs? I mean, they're already taking away kids from parents because of their religious beliefs and how they educate their kids. So you, you see the pattern here. The point is, so what if you change the name? It's still the old uh, program but with a new name and new marketing. And you see the extensive list to change, and it will change again. So um, so how did we get Common Core? Let's go to graphic 12 here and uh, see what that says. Uh, first of all, you had a 2009 stimulus bill, $4.35 billion from the Federal Department of Education Federal Department of Education, which federal is the right word, but there shouldn't exist. There's no constitutional authority for that, and our Constitution says what the government can do uh, and only can do. Uh, it can't do anything other than what the Constitution allows it to do, supposedly. That's the way it's written. Uh, it's not the way people act on it. Uh, then you have the department created race to the top competition, and then to successfully complete or to compete for race to the top grants, states agreed to adopt Common Core Sight Unseen. They don't know what it, they, they just took it. Okay, is this what we got to do to get the money? All right, we'll take the money and we'll just say we do it. Kind of like Obamacare, you got to pass the bill to see what's in it. Same type of philosophy. And boy, are we getting snookered uh, big time. Uh, so let's go uh, to graphic 13. <laughs> I got my producer hopping in there. <laughs> you just see him rolling in his chair. <laughs> um, uh, here's the timeline for Race to the Top. Uh, November 2009, the application was released. January 2010, uh, Minnesota applies for Race to the Top grants. Uh, March 2010, Common Core Standard Draft release. June 1st, 2010, Phase 2 application due and final drafts of standard uh, released, um, of standards released uh, for other states. And June 2nd, 2010, standards were uh, re released. In August 2010, final state commitments required. Um, so Minnesota uh, applies, I can't read that word, uh, Common Core in 2011 for the nation, only with two other states. Can't read that word. What's that word? Can you read it there? Uh, pilots, excuse me, Minnesota Pilots Common Core uh, in 2011 for the nation with only two other states, and that was Texas. So, uh, you know, what, what, what's interesting is the, the enticement is the money. We'll give you the money, you do this, and the state goes, okay, we want the money. Whether it's good for your kids or not is irrelevant. Uh, so, and, and, and one thing that's really important to know here is the federal government can assume powers granted by the states. So if the state says, federal government, you can do this for us, we'll let you do this, the federal government can do that. And uh, education was ceded to the federal with the Department of Ed. Eh, not totally. If, if the state said, hey, don't, don't get involved here, uh, the state can tell the Fed to, you know, to leave, get out of here. But states don't do that, and, uh, but they need to take back their authority. I want to show you the next graphic, and this just says who's behind this whole, whole Common Core um, funding. 
and it's ba it's basically the Gates Foundation, Bill Gates. And there's just a list of all the corporations and people. That's really hard to see. I understand it's a bad graphic, but um, uh, if you want to see detailed graphics, go to uh, commoncoremn.com. I believe it's com, isn't it? Uh, not org. Um, Minnesota Common Core. Min, uh, commoncoremn.com. Go to that website and you'll get a, a whole bunch of information uh, on what's going, uh, what's going on. Um, so this whole thing is going to replace math standards, it's going to replace social studies overview, and, it's, and it's, they're talking about next generation science. But what they're doing is really taking and socializing our education system. And instead of really educating your kids, they're really trying to socialize them with their own philosophy of life. It really is a religion. And it's a religion based on the state being God, state being number one. This is my opinion. Um, and the state is who you answer to, the state is who you work for, and the state is the one that gives you life. <laughs> that's in my mind that's the uh, philosophy of what's going on there um, so I I wish I had the graphic for this but I just saw a graphic come off uh, 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 sent to me in an email uh, but let's go to graphic number 22 uh, but it talks about what's part of common core in the curriculum that's being developed for grade school saying it's perfectly normal okay what this does and of course with now Minnesota passing uh, fake marriage and redefining marriage to be something it never was in the whole history of mankind uh, now for some reason it's different you have this book that's being taught it's perfectly normal and in it are graphic cartoons that could not be shown on TV for your fourth graders. You, you couldn't play them on TV, but your fourth graders get to see them in this book. Uh, they're cartoons, but they're graphic, and it's just not necessary uh, for this age. And did you know that, parent, that this was going on, and this is part of it, White Bear Lake? You're all in line for this, okay? And not only are you not going to know who your school board members are, they're not in, you're not going to need a school board. And not only uh, are you now going to be, you are an international baccalaureate school with a, uh, not a United States constitutional form of government and being taught in your school and not the Republican form of government, because our state constitution says you needed to be, we need to have public schools to educate people in order to preserve the republic. And our whole education system is now teaching against a republic form, a Republican form of government, uh, violating our constitution. And so they're teaching your kids something they're not to teach, and they're removing you as parents as the head of your children. And you don't have that right to educate your children, um, to raise your children in the education and upbringing of your choice. The federal government's going to tell you how to do that. Uh, it's, it's a bad situation that's going on. Uh, also, we'll go to graph 23 here. We're, gonna, we're, we're looking at common core is going for the babies. Okay, common core for babies. And uh, Arnie Duncan, Secretary, uh, our goal is to, perform, uh, is to partner with states to increase learning opportunities for children from birth to age five. Increase learning opportunities. You know, and I hear this argument, and, I, and you hear about starting pre-K, starting school for, and so get kids ready for school. No. Kindergarten is soon enough. Teachers can teach a kindergartner what they need to know for first grade, to be ready for first grade. Okay? They don't need 
fourth grade stuff or four-year-old, three-year-old. It's not necessary. That's what families are for. But of course, the state is in the process of defining laws and building incentives to not have a family, to not have a mother and father in the home. You see the breakdown going on? This whole breakdown is intentional, and the incentives are out there to destroy the family and to make people dependent on the state. So this Common Core, uh, um, it, it includes home visiting programs. So the state will be coming into your home to decide whether you're doing what they want you to do with your child or not. You know, a total reversal of our form of government. Hey, if you're abusing your child and you get caught and there's evidence, you know, the state has the right to protect that child. But if you're not, the state should not be in your home. And that means school teachers and principals because now they're agents of the state. Then you just need to be wary of that. Well, there's a whole lot of... Uh, a, a whole lot of input, intrusion into the family going on with this Common Core curriculum. And basically what's going to happen is the children will be turning on their parents for doing things that are proper for a parent to do. Uh, you know, disciplining your child. Hey, my dad wouldn't let me watch TV uh, tonight. And the school may say, hey, that's terrible. Um, that's, that's being abusive. I mean, they, they get to define what abuse is. No longer do the people get to define that. Uh, and they can use that to take your kids from you. They'll, they'll figure something out. Are you, are you as a parent teaching your children something we as a state don't want you to teach them? And it doesn't matter what it is. They can just come up with something and say it. You know, it sounds like I'm here being I'm over-exaggerating, but I'm not. And you need to realize that this is happening, and it's hard for people to, and they just don't figure out. And the biggest gap and the biggest stumbling block to somebody understanding what's taking place is, it's not happening to me. It didn't happen to me. It's not happening to me. So how could it happen to anybody else? And I tell you, it takes a big, big person, a big man and a big woman to listen to other parents, other people who know what is going on and to say, boy, this person might know something that I don't know. I need to at least listen and find out what's going on. And boy, and I read a book uh, by Eric Metaxas uh, on Bonhoeffer and fantastic book, just unbelievable about what was happening in Germany and how the church, uh, a large portion of the church was very ignorant about what was taking place in Germany. Uh, and there were Christian generals in the German army and they were going to the church and saying, here's what's happening. This is happening. We're killing people. And they wouldn't you know, we're collecting people and killing them, and they, church, didn't believe them because they didn't see it happen. And I tell you, you know, for the years that I've been down at the legislature, to see people, and I've met some fantastic people, uh, Dan Severson, Rob Eastland, people that have no fight in this battle over family law and um, and these things, these atrocities that the state is doing to families hasn't happened to them and they pick up the banner. These are remarkable, remarkable people that step out and fight for people that are being unjustly accused and, and being abused by the state. Uh, but they're rare. Those type of people are very, very rare. Uh, mostly what you find down in the legislature is they'll stand up for you if there's money in it. So, same with a lot of attorneys, but not all. Okay, there's still what I would call a remnant of good, good people in there trying to good thing, do good things, and they get beat up by the system. 
Well, um, let's go to graphic 28 because this is important with the Common Core curriculum uh, is that they are doing a state longitudinal data system. And this data system, it's the study of the same child who is researched and observed repeatedly over a long period of time from cradle to grave. So even though the name cradle to grave isn't part of the education system, it's been changed to Common Core. So they're collecting all the information on your child that they can collect and uh, in order to, in my opinion, in order to control their lives. Let's go to the next graphic. Um, this is called biometrics, uh, number 29. Uh, this is what they're going to do in White Bear Lake. They're going to do this fingerprints, retina patterns, voice prints, DNA, facial characteristics, and handwriting. Now, in case you don't believe me, let's go to graphic. Oh, I put it on a graphic there, but uh, uh, where is it? Um, 33, 34. Oh, oh, 34, number 34. This is White Bear Lake's policy here. Okay. Um, a glorified representative. Uh, was that is that what it says? Glorified? I can't read it. Uh, and then under there, uh, biometrics record. Okay, and there there it is in their documents for this biometric records of your child. Uh, and having a number of different standards for uh, recognizing your child. All in the name of we're protecting your child, but that's not really what's happened. It's data collection to control every aspect of your child. All right. Um, let's go to graph 31 here. Here's, wh here's what you need to do. Okay, what can you do to reclaim local control of education? Well, I, I'm going to forget this graphic right now, but the first thing I'm going to say, you need to go to your precinct caucus. So in two years from now, you have to go to your precinct caucus. That's how you regain control. If you don't go to your precinct caucus, the, fi the fight and the battle is just a lot, lot harder. Okay? Contact your district and state school boards. Tell them you don't want this Common Core. And tell them you'll be voting against them uh, if they're doing this. In White Bear, they need to kick these board members out, but how do you know who they are if their names are no, if they're not findable anymore, which is part of the intent of Common Core? Contact your elected senators and rep. Let them know where you stand on this issue. Contact Senate and House Education Committees. Uh, opt out of these programs that I don't know what they are, but uh, obviously they're related to school. But go to the uh, CommonCoreMN.com website. Tell others about it. Hold a meeting. Donate. And uh, let's go to graphic 32. Here's where you need to go get more information on Common Core. So just put in your browser, commoncoremn.com. There's a Gmail website, commoncoremn at gmail.com. Go to the website. Contact those people. They'll help you organize. They have a number of bills down at the legislature that we didn't get into. Um, to change the Common Core, and they are hopefully, my understanding, if I remember correctly, uh, preparing lawsuits uh, against the school districts that are pushing Common Core, which violate our state statutes, which violates our Minnesota Constitution. It's a very, very, very serious uh, uh, problems for Common Core, for our children. And folks, this is why um, I promote the Parental Rights Constitutional Amendment. Go to parentalrights.org. There's a constitutional amendment put into the U.S. Constitution that's trying to be put in the Constitution. It says it's a fundamental right to, that you as a parent get to raise your child in the education and upbringing of your choice. That right we do not have in the United States anymore. It's a strong right, but it's being taken away bit by bit, piece by piece. 
uh, minute by minute, day by day, legislation, legislative session by legislative session. It's just going and it's going hard. Go to parentalrights.org, get your U.S. rep and senator to sign on to that. Of course, unfortunately, Democrats aren't for that. Unbelievable. The Democrats in power in Minnesota are not for parents having rights to raise their kids in their upbringing and education of their choice. Something's wrong there. It should tell you something. Um, also, uh, so, I mean, it's a, it's a multi-phase attack. Also, it should be put in the Minnesota Constitution that you as a parent have the right to raise your children in the education upbringing of your choice. And there are bills in the legislature helping to support that. And again, you need to call your legislature and, and get that done and get them to vote on it. All right, we're wrapping up here. Just one last quick thing about my dad uh, when he was in the hospital. He has a doctor. And because of Obamacare, my dad's doctor could not see him for the last two months of his life. They have what's called hospitalists. And um, we need to get the uh, music going. Uh, maybe, maybe it is. <laughs> Uh, but they could not see, could not see him. My dad had myasthenia graf gravis. None of the people knew what that was. None of the nurses or other doctors knew what it was. They had to do all the research on the line where my dad's doctor knew what it was about. He could not talk to him for two months. That's Obamacare for you. Folks, it's a bad deal. It's another national form of government. Remember, folks, if you don't stand up for other people's liberties, who's going to stand up for yours? And good men don't do nothing. God bless. Have a great evening. your love.